dining car is now open for the first seating. Hello, this is Rail Rider. Sorry I was lazy. I have announced this one a long time ago. Well, one year ago. It's time for... Mother f***ing Vision Line. I'm going to review the Vision Line Challenger this time. Ah, Vision Line. Lionel's attempt to make the best model train ever by doing what has never been done before, such as using whistle steam over and over again. And Vision Line remakes a Century Club model. Vision Line remakes a pre-war model. Vision Line remakes a JLC model. And now, Vision Line does something nobody thought Vision Line will ever do ever. Vision Line remakes a Vision Line. If anybody knows when Vision Line will remake a Vision Line that remade a pre-war, tell me, because I want that engine so badly. This version was offered in the 2018 Volume 2 catalog. Lionel had offered the original version of the Vision Line Challenger in their 2010 Volume 1 catalog, which is by far the best Lionel catalog of them all. There was so much Vision Line. Here is one mistake that the original version made. They had forgot 3985 and 3977. At least they did 3967. That one pulled an excursion and 3985 was disguised as that one. In this new version, they had fixed that mistake. On the pilot, there's a swing-out scale coupler. You can replace that with this coupler for double-heading. Yay, I can double-head it with an 844! If I have an 844! You can open up the front smoke box door. Just a bunch of electronics. Don't mess with it. It's got lighted marker lights and lighted number boards. The Rail King version doesn't even have number boards. Looks like a different steamer without them. Like all Vision Line steamers, except for the GS5s and GS4s, well, 4439 does, it has whistle steam. To load smoke fluid for that, fill either one of the stacks with 20 drops. That will take care of both the two stacks and the whistle. To load smoke fluid for the dynamo and injectors, remove the dynamo and fill the hole with 20 drops. However, the smoke fluid doesn't get in the smoke unit very well. But I looked up a solution. I used this small smoke bottle that I had back when I was running HO scale trains. I fill it with 20 drops, or less, and snake it in the hole, like this. There are switches under the sand dome. In the original version, you had to turn off track power and turn it back on again to turn the smoke units on or off. Why did Lionel do that? I don't know. They fixed that for this version, but now you can't turn off whistle steam without turning off stack steam. You can see more details here that some of you won't give a flying crap about. It also has this amazing detail. I don't know what it is. I have the oil-fired version. It doesn't have ash pan glow, nor firebox flicker, but I do think the coal-fired version does. Here's the tender with the electrocoupler, lighted taillights, and rear light. Here's where you adjust the volume. This is a model of 4014's tender. Oh yeah! 
because 4014 is using 3985's tender. There are many versions of this. 3985 is the most popular. The second most popular is the What If 49er paint scheme. That definitely wouldn't be my second choice. I would have chosen 3977 or Clinchfield 675 or maybe the Rio Grande 3800 or that single stack experimental 3975. Or I could say 3949 is my last choice. This engine is 32 inches long. The same length as the Vision Line Big Boy! In real life, big boys are bigger. It should have been easy for Lionel not to make that mistake, since they have less wheels. I was preparing this layout for the Vision Line Challenger. I once asked someone on YouTube, how much does it overhang? He told me in the comments, 4.5 inches, which explains why my tunnel is oversized. I was worried it will bump into it, but really, it only overhangs 2 inches from the outer rail on an 072 curve. So keep everything 2 inches away from that curve. Ladies and gentlemen, the dining car is now open for the first seating.